You are tuned into Evolutionary Radio TV edition. As always, make sure to watch until the end of the video, because at the end of the video, I'm going to summarize everything I spoke about in this video into the key take-home points you need to know. So, before I get into all the scientific mumbo-jumbo, before I get into the optimal testosterone to estrogen ratio as a man, before I get into rheumatized inhibitors, what they are, the different types of rheumatized inhibitors, I want you to just stop and think about all this stuff logically, like really get this stuff back to basics. What is estrogen? Estrogen is the primary female sex hormone. Testosterone is the primary male sex hormone. Now, men have both testosterone and level, both testosterone and estrogen in their body. Female have both testosterone and estrogen in their body. The difference is that men have a much higher testosterone to estrogen ratio. Females have a much higher estrogen to testosterone ratio. So men, more testosterone, female, more estrogen. Now, what's the main difference between men and women? Generally speaking, men, much more muscle, much lower body fat levels. Women, much higher body fat levels, much less muscle. So, as a man watching this video, 99% of you have the goals of building muscle, losing body fat. Do you wanna be more feminine? Do you want higher body fat levels and less muscle? No, of course not. You want that high testosterone to estrogen ratio. So you want to do everything in your power to keep that ratio as high as possible. Now, don't think that estrogen is the devil. As a man, you do need some estrogen. Some estrogen is needed for normal sexual function. Some estrogen is needed to sensitize the androgen receptors of your muscle cells. It's like that age old saying, everything in moderation. If you get blood work done, you want your estrogen levels to be right in that normal range. You don't want it low, you don't want it high. So, let's get into steroid cycles. If you are gonna use a steroid cycle, let's say you're gonna use testosterone. When you have a high level of testosterone in your body, some of that testosterone is gonna start aromatizing into estrogen. What you want to do is you want to take an aromatase inhibitor to prevent that conversion. That's exactly what an aromatase inhibitor is. It's often abbreviated as the words AI. So if you ever see AI talked about on like a bodybuilding forum, that stands for aromatase inhibitor. An aromatase inhibitor prevents testosterone from aromatizing into estrogen, and it's gonna keep your estrogen levels in that normal range. Another nice thing about aromatase inhibitors is because the testosterone is not aromatizing into estrogen, you're gonna have higher free testosterone levels. Because otherwise, some of that testosterone aromatizes into estrogen, you lose some of that testosterone. So by using an aromatase inhibitor, it's actually gonna increase the amount of gains you make because you're gonna have all of that testosterone as testosterone. Now, there's a big misconception floating around that using an AI with your cycle will hinder gains. This is where that misconception comes from. When you have a high amount of estrogen in your body, it's gonna cause side effects like water retention, can cause things like gynecomastia, it's gonna cause things like bloating, acne, things like that. It's the water retention that caused that misconception. So, if I did a cycle without an AI, if I went and I stepped on the scale, my body weight would be much higher than if I did a cycle with an AI. That additional gain in body weight is not muscle. It's just water retention from that high estrogen levels. It's that high estrogen levels causing the side effect of water retention that's making that scale weight go up. If you took photos and you did the same cycle and on one cycle you had an AI and on the next cycle you didn't use an AI, you would notice that on the cycle you did an AI, you have much less water retention, much more muscle definition because your estrogen levels are staying in that normal range. So on every steroid cycle you do, you want to use an AI on day one of your cycle and use it throughout your entire cycle and PCT. Don't just have it on hand. I always hear that. I had my AI on hand. Having it on hand makes no sense because once the side effects have occurred, it's already too late. It's kind of like this. If you had the number to call a car insurance company to get car insurance, if you had that business card, you know, if you had that in your pocket, just on hand, if you got in a car accident, that's not gonna help you. You had that number, but I mean, having it on hand isn't gonna help you because you don't have car insurance. The car accident already happened, it's too late. You wanna get that car insurance before, the whole point of an AI is to prevent side effects before they occur. So, let's get into AIs. All AIs uh, uh, prevent testosterone from aromatizing to estrogen. There's three main AIs you can buy. 
First one, arimacin, also known as exemestane. Arimacin is by far the best choice. The reason for that is arimacin is a suicide AI. So that means once you finish using it, you're gonna have no estrogen rebound. Arimacin, best choice. I'm gonna give out a general recommendation on dosage, but again, everyone is individual. You really wanna get blood work done and see where your estrogen levels are and then increase or decrease your dose accordingly. Like I said, estrogen is something you don't want low, you don't want high, you want it right in that normal range. For most steroid users using reasonable dosages, 10 to 12.5 milligrams of arimacin every other day is a good dosage. The second AI is arimidex, also known as anastrozole. Arimidex is not as good of an option as arimacin because it is not a suicide AI. You're going to get some estrogen rebound once you stop using it. A lot of people still use it. It's fine to use, but you want to slowly taper off your dosage because you will get an estrogen rebound from it. So for Arimidex, the standard dosage is 0.5 milligrams every other day. And again, with these AIs, you want to start them on day one of your cycle and use it throughout your entire cycle and PCT. Remember that when you finish your cycle, you don't actually just stop. The steroid esters are slowly clearing out of your body. So because of that, some arimatization is gonna still occur even though you are no longer doing injections. So make sure to keep using your AI during your PCT. The last AI is letrozole. Letrozole is by far the strongest out of all the AIs available. Like I said, some estrogen is needed for normal sexual function and to sensitize the androgen receptor. So letrozole, you don't want to use. It's too strong. It's going to crush your estrogen levels. It's going to cause side effects. It's just not good. The only time you would use letrozole is if you're having a gynecomastia flare-up and you basically need to call 911 and get that flare-up under control as soon as possible. If you're being smart, if you're using an AI throughout your entire cycle, you will never need letrozole. Letrozole is also very effective for, uh, for if you have gyno, removing it. But for most situations, letrozole is too strong. So of all of them, Orimacin is the best choice. So basically, the take-home message from this is that as a man, you want a high testosterone to estrogen ratio. High estrogen levels in men are going to cause side effects like gynecomastia, water retention, they're also going to cause increased body fat levels, especially around the midsection. If you're using steroids, you want to use an arimatase inhibitor, particularly arimacin, on day one of your cycle and throughout your entire cycle in PCT. Hopefully this video helps. If you like this video and you want more content, check out the Evolutionary Radio podcast. We've recorded over 140 awesome episodes. We've had some of the biggest names in the industry on as guests. You can just find it on iTunes or you can go on evolutionary.org, Evolutionary Radio Podcast. Evolutionary Radio is also on Facebook and Instagram, so hit us up there. And finally, I want to know your thoughts on these videos. I'm doing these videos for you guys. I want to know whether you like these videos, whether you hate these videos, suggestions for improvement, topics for other videos. I got tough skin. Don't feel like, don't be scared to send me a negative comment. If you love the video, if you hated the video, I want to know. I want to hear from you.